Metro News, welcome back here at the AARP broadcast location. Please welcome the governor of the great state, Governor Jim Justice, on the phone with us. Governor, good morning, and I, I'm, I'm increasingly concerned as I talk to people here uh, who come by, who come on this program, that we do not have common ground on a budget for the state with the midnight deadline, midnight Saturday deadline approaching, and of course you could extend it to, to work on the budget, but how concerned are you that we're not gonna get a budget? Terribly concerned now. I, I think, uh, you know, I, I really felt like, you know, when we, you know, when right after the inauguration, I went down on the floor and I talked to the, you know, I talked to the Republicans on the House and the Senate side both, and uh, we had meetings in my office, my office. We've had breakfasts, and I, and everybody was, you know, everybody would just say the same stuff, you know, say, you know, that they they recognized the problem, they they understood there was no way to get there without. Some levels of revenue raises, uh, and and you know, my call, bless his heart. I mean, you know, here's here's a, a great senator, a, a great man, and that man is is you know, it almost stands with tears in his eyes. I mean, he you know, he's he's just a, a voice screaming in 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 the wilderness, and uh, and it, but it just you know, I I am I am really. Uh, Frustrated. I guess the the right word would be sad. You know, I, I I think just this, and I really do, Hoppy. I I think you know, Mr. T would have said, "I pity the fool," and and we're the fool. You know, the people are the fool. I mean, you know, we've we've and, and I and I and I just I just you know me well enough to know. I just tell it like I think it is, and. Uh, but I think I, I, we've elected a bunch of people that are so out of touch with the people, with the business community, with our universities, with the educators, with, you know, labor. They're so out of touch and they're so, so out in left field. It is, is it's unbelievable the damage that they're causing or will cause. And, and I'll stand as firm and as passionate as long as I can stand. But, uh, but at the end of the day, it is a sad, sad, sad state of affairs about what's going on. Governor, I will, though. Uh, I just had on Senate President uh, Mitch Carmichael, and Mitch said, I'm going to paraphrase, but Mitch said that the Senate budget, which holds the line on spending and says that their budget version is they will spend what the state expects to take in in revenue next fiscal year. And Carmichael added that the Senate is doing, A, what it promised to do, and B, what you said you would do during the campaign. He said they're actually doing what you said you would do during the campaign, which is not spend any more money than you have. Well, Hoppy, that sounds good. <clears throat> and that's just, you know, that you know. first of all, how could I have known in the campaign really how bad things really are? And, you know, and it sounds good, doesn't it, you know, for, for Mitch to come on and say, we're only going to spend the money that we have. And, and, and the net net of the whole thing is if we do just that, this state will die, period. I mean, that's all there is to it. Now, you can say anything you want, but if you go and you strip the universities or you strip, you know, K through 12 or you walk away, literally, walk away and let thousands of people die because that's what the weakest the will walk away from the weakest and absolutely we will absolutely run this state off a cliff and if that's what these people that are so blooming out of touch want to do please please the people of this state listen to me listen to me listen to the voters if you have elected these people and you want to ruin this state, you can't continue to elect these people because absolutely they are running the state off a cliff and they're so out of touch. It's unbelievable with all the different branches from business. But look at the group that came yesterday. You know, you had the chamber, you had kids, you had uh, – AARP, you had the veterans, the tourism people, the educators, the universities, 
you had a coalition like nobody could ever put together, and everybody speaking with one voice saying, do justice's plan. And you've what? got these these people that, you know, they didn't want me to call them knuckleheads. I don't know what in the world, how they could possibly think the way they're thinking. Do you, now, if, 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 Governor Jim Justice is with us. So let's, the, the way it is headed, and there's a House version of the budget, there's a Senate version, and I would imagine what comes out of that will be something that will, um, will have uh, more cuts than you want. Are you prepared, are you prepared to veto a budget plan that is not very, very close to what you have proposed, and that is $236 million in new revenue. Are you prepared to veto any budget plan that is not very close to $230, $240 million in new revenue? Bobby, I am, and, and I am because it's, it's not because it's my idea. It's because it's the right idea. You know, this has been vetted with all the different groups, from business all the way down. I mean, this is... This is with the Republican base and with the Democrat base. This is with all of us. This isn't Justice's idea. Justice doesn't need any credit for anything. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, it's just good sense. And, and just to say, and, and please, someone awaken to the fact that, Jim Justice, this is not about live within your means or, or taxes on the other side. This is honestly D-Day time. You know, Clay Marsh, who's, you know, the head doc at, at Ruby, WVU's hospital, he just sent me this. He said, it's time to invest in West Virginia because we're worth it. You know, it's just, it just goes on and on and on and on, you know. And, and I'll stand as solid as I can stand. You've got to remember, too, in my proposal, there's been $55 million of cuts in my, in my proposal, and every one of those cuts has got a name to it. You know, we didn't want, you know, I mean, just think about this. You know, you've talked about the dogs before and everything. Well, as soon, as soon as they came out and said they're getting rid of the dogs, my gosh, there was an uprising. Well, every one of these cuts has got a name, and I've told everybody over and over, I'm willing to listen to any level of cuts, but remember, people's got to remember, Hoppy, just this. The easy stuff's all gone. They've lived off the rainy day fund, and we have lived off of the easy cuts thus far. And now justice comes into town, and there, and all the easy stuff is gone. Now... Poppy, I'm not willing to run this state off a cliff and, and everybody just die. I'm not willing to do that because I have some some sacred belief that I'm going to sit on a rock and, by God, no matter what, I'm not going to raise a tax. And even if it means killing every single body around me, I'm not going to do that. Well, I'm not. I, you know, that's just plain stupid. That's all there is to it. It's just plain stupid. Governor, you know, we need to do what's right for our state. Governor Jim Justice, Governor, appreciate you coming on. We will stay in close contact. Thanks for coming on today. Thank you, Hoppy. Bye bye. All right.